Malawi, an agriculture economy with about 80% of the population living in rural areas and predominantly depending on it. Malawi's food security is generally defined in terms of adequate production of and access to maize, the country's step of food. Maize is grown by over 90% of the farm households. Importing farm inputs and food supplies to support the agriculture sector is expensive and not sustainable. As with many other African countries, low land productivity undermines food production in Malawi, stifling income growth from the lack of surplus food. Food insecurity and malnutrition are perennial problems for the majority of rural households. This is the overriding concern for agricultural scientists and extension educators. Increasing the productivity of smallholder systems requires a sustainable and long-term solution. Such a solution calls for intensification of practices such as water harvesting and reusing of nutrients. This gave birth to Africa Rising, a project which is being implemented by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, in Mali, Ghana in West Africa, and Tanzania and Malawi in East and Southern Africa, respectively. In Malawi, the project is being led by Michigan State University, MSU. It focuses on intensification of agricultural systems through action research with smallholder farmers. Building on successive examples of participatory action research on smallholder farms in Malawi over the past two decades, the research team has begun tapping into these products of agricultural research to move towards more sustainable agricultural production systems. The main objective is to build capacity for integrating participatory action research with farmer-oriented learning approaches. A high-level delegation from USAID, Michigan State University, and IITA visited Africa Rising project sites in Malawi, particularly in Cheo and Deza districts, from 4 to 8 March 2013. Dr. Regis Yikowo, project specialist and research associate at Michigan State University, says one of the key interventions and core learning approaches with farmers here involves the use of the mother and baby adaptive trials as platforms for knowledge dissemination. Groundnut, pigeon pea, uh, we have um, soya bean, cow pea that we are doing here. But we want them to be in mixtures as well. We see we can actually fortify protein, con protein production per unit area. And in this area, farmers have got an average of 0.7 hectare land. And that we have to get the best out of every inch of land that we have. And that's one way to do it, to start doubling up legumes, especially when the, the ecology says that there is no competition between the, the, the legumes involved. Some may be deep-rooted, some may be early maturing. That means in space, they are in the same space, but in time the phenology is different. And then we can capture, the, I mean, we can take advantage of that and get the best output in terms of nitrogen contribution to the system. This is part of Africa Rising so objectives, food security, nutrition, income, and so on and so forth. And with li on a limited land of one hectare or less, a family of five, six should be able to feed itself adequately. And then if we do that, I think we'll be able to say we're con Africa Rising has contributed to the livelihoods of farmers. Dr. Imgard Zeldon, Africa Rising Project Manager and IITA scientist based in Nigeria, emphasizes 
that farmers should do away with monocropping, which is an outdated way of doing agriculture if its aim is for increased productivity. What we want to do is we want to do research to intensify cereal-based farming systems by including other crops and not only crops but also livestock where possible. And livestock means rumin small ruminants, uh, poultry, whatever is possible. And the final objective of course of our research is um, to, to help farmers to increase their productivity, to have more food available from the same farm uh, size and uh, to to, to have more food and also to have better food to increase nutrition of the family. That's why we are putting a lot of emphasis on, on legume crops, which are good for nutrition, but they are also good for the soils and, uh, and they are good for intercropping with cereals. And farmers do that already as a, traditional, um, as a traditional practice, but we want to bring in more combinations and probably better, better varieties than the ones currently used. Monocropping is, is not the best and the most uh, sustainable uh, farming system. Uh, intercropping and many farmers do already maize and bean and maize and pumpkin is a very common practice here in in, in Malawi. Um, the intercropping we have several crops from the same uh, from the same area of, of land, so total productivity is is much higher. And also these crops they help each other. The legumes provide nitrogen to the maize, so it requires less application of um, mineral uh, fertilizer. Farmers themselves believe that the program is crucial to building their capacity and supporting the adoption of integrated adaptive management strategies that address the challenges smallholders face. Komaso <laughs> The visit to Nsheo provided an opportunity to showcase what farmers in the district are doing with the knowledge they have acquired from Africa Rising. The Africa Rising After interacting with the farmers, Africa Rising team and partners feel satisfied that the project is making advances in promoting the production of grain legumes across diverse communities. Professor Siege Snap is the principal scientist in the Malawi project. We all know that uh, fertilizers are essential, but we're hoping that the legumes, these, uh, the peanuts, groundnuts, the soybean, and the pigeon pea can improve the fertilizer response. So that Malawi, when they have the fertilizer subsidy, you also have the basal fertilizer is this legume. So we're hoping it provides a sustainable way for Malawi to keep providing fertilizers but use it better. So it's a more sustainable strategy for agriculture by improving yields. The type of crops I'm seeing here, they're not new to yes. local farmers. Yes. What is it that is new in what you're doing? Ah, well, we have new varieties produced by Chitedzi of these legumes and they're in new combinations. I don't think you've seen the peanuts with the pi pigeon pea before, Ndolo and Tedzi, right? So we're trying to double them up 
for double the benefit. And then we also find that pigeon pea is new in some parts of Malawi. And so we're also training on how to use it in the diet and working with some of our hospital partners who want to see soybean fed to children. So we're building on what has been done, yes, absolutely. But taking it the next step with the doubled up legumes. We want you to try. That, we are not telling you what to do. No, this is the new Malawi. We want you to try. Try the doubled up legumes. If it works, great. If conservation agriculture works, great. Maybe combine. Try things out for yourself. Delhi Longwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources has been participating in the project through provision of field protocols and participatory action research support. Professor Kanyamapiri is the new Vice Chancellor for Rwanda and is happy that the knowledge from the project is already spreading to the farmers. These technologies that you are seeing here, we have developed them together with the Michigan State University, whereby we have tested different technologies, planting legumes in a single or doubled up uh, fashion. So where you see pigeon peas and groundnuts or pigeon peas and soya, all these we have developed together. And now what we, is happening is scaling out through Africa Rising, through McKnight Foundation and so on. To us, uh, we feel happy as Bunda because whatever we have developed with our colleagues in terms of research now is spreading to the other farmers. But we are also collaborating with the Michigan State University in terms of capacity building. It has already demonstrated transformation. I can give you an example in Ekwendeni where we started with this research. Uh, the legumes have made a difference in uh, providing family protein and uh, the soil fertility status, even on a sandy soil, has uh, increased to a point where instead of putting a full bag of fertilizer, now you can find that uh, only half will be put there, with the other half coming from the manure, coming from the legumes such as soya, such as pigeon peas and groundnuts, among others. Cheo and Deza, the participating districts in Africa Rising, fall within the USAID Feed the Future Priority Zone. They are the target districts for Africa Rising Malawi. Each of the districts is led by a District Agricultural Development Officer, Dado. Here we are trying to find the best combinations in terms of maize bed systems. Uh, like uh, we have seen here, we have doubled legumes, where in the same ridge we are planting two legume plants. For example, soya interplanted with the groundnuts or uh, pigeon peas interplanted with the soya. Then we have also pure maize and even uh, maize interplanted with pigeon peas. So what we are trying to find out is uh, for the farmers to find the best combination which can yield more and also can improve the soil fertility. Uh, Af the Africa Rising program is currently funded uh, by USAID, and so we're operating in uh, three major production regions in Africa, uh, West Africa, uh, the Ethiopian Highlands, and then here in East and Southern Africa. Is there any reason why you chose these particular areas? Um, well, so uh, definitely we selected these major uh, growing regions because of their potential to substantially increase productivity. In other words, raise a lot more food for the populations in these areas. And of course, we took into account uh, the, the number of people that depend on these farming systems as well. So large numbers of people, uh, high potential to increase the, the food production uh, on these farms and the um, availability of the markets to support that increase in food production. There's so much that we can learn in this program from the Malawi farmers. Uh, they have a lot of experience, a lot of skills, and a lot of insight into how to increase the productivity of their farms, how to make them more resilient in the face of some of the changes they face in terms of climate, in terms of markets. And then we can take that knowledge and uh, inform farmers in West Africa, in Ethiopia, about 
uh, the skills and, and technologies of the farmers here in Malawi. But we can also bring some of the lessons learned that, that we've learned from other regions into here. So just from the tours of uh, today on these two farms, we see the tremendous potential of increasing the production of maize by including these types of legumes like pigeon peas, like soybeans, and so on. So, I would say some of what I've seen, particularly here, is probably ab above my expectations. To see you know, how the application of, 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 of some of the technology and the new ways of doing things can present some alternatives for the farmers, which is, is very exciting. And so um, this is my first visit to Malawi. The, the combination of the ability to grow things that help them economically, but also uh, things that are more nutritious, more different protein sources for them and their families, I think really seems to be how you bring together the different aspects of this so that farmers can put together a system that works for them and their families and that really helps everybody in general. Michigan State University Acting Provost Professor John Yort concurs with the other members of the delegation in appreciating Africa Rising initiative, describing it as the best way to go for Malawian farmers to break the yoke of poverty. The, the work is very, very valuable, not just in country, but to us. I mean, what Michigan State University is learning here, we can uh, share across Africa, but really across the world. Uh, we're a global institution, and what we learn here really can be translated. So that's, that's one of the things that's very clear from what we've seen here. Um, a, a second is that uh, we need to make better efforts to connect the various we have. We're doing many things in the country related to health, particularly children's health. Obviously many things here related to um, food security, uh, but the relationship hasn't always been clear. And so to try to pull our researchers together in ways that help uh, them work alongside each other toward those goals is important. And then third, we really realize we need to c continue to expand the partnerships, uh, not just again in country where they're very strong and very valued, but we need additional funding partners. We need to begin to, not begin, but to continue to look uh, for those who share an interest and a commitment to this work, and they need to join us. Uh, they need to join us in supporting this kind of work. Africa Rising Malawi anticipates to realizing an increased participation by farmers and agricultural service providers in research for development platforms, which in turn stimulates increased demand for empirical knowledge.